Hello, it's a pleasure to be here at Code Week and give you a talk about micro frontends with Angular and Module Federation. So let's start with that. What is this talk about? We will talk about uh, different architectural options. Um, for example, also about micro frontend, especially we will put a focus on this architecture. We will then talk about a module federation, which is kind of the enabler for a micro frontend architecture for a single page application. And then we'll dig deeper into different approaches like the single version setup and also the multi version setup. We'll finalize the talk then um, by talking about synchronizing different routers. How, it, how does it work? to manage different uh, URLs in the address bar, so different passes coming from different router instances that should be managed within the very same single page application. My name is Michael, my full name is Maki Egerzikis, and I'm working in the Angular Architects IO Trainers Network to help companies uh, to accomplish their Angular story doing trainings, consultancies, and reviews. Um, I'm also sometimes a conference speaker and if you are interested in getting a customized tailored workshop then just reach out to us and we're happy to help. So let's start with uh, talking about micro frontends. We can slice an application into tinier parts into maybe self-contained domains and each domain can then be managed within one micro front and one micro app. So in our example, which is a flight search engine, we can uh, differentiate the flight booking area, the flight luggage area, the flight boarding area, and the flight check-in area. All of those areas can be independent domains, and each and every domain can be managed in one micro frontend if you want to do it that way. So what is this all about? Why are we trying to slice an application into micro frontends? Basically, it's all about teams, teams that are managing your application, that are developing your application, but also the key users. And each and every domain, each and every application has typically a different set of developers. And those developers need to often be the targeting companies need to have some kind of freedom, some kind of uh, own choices for technology, for architecture and so on. And therefore, micro front and center can, in, can help in those regards. So what are micro front ends all about? They are first and foremost about scaling teams. So if you have the target in your company that you would like to have a scaling application, but moreover also scaling teams, then micro front ends can definitely help you. Let's now compare different architectural approaches. First of all, uh, the Angular default way, which is the build monolith. The build monolith slices application, as discussed before, into tiny self-contained domains. So for example, this feature domain booking, this feature domain boarding, and maybe a shared kernel. Within those domains, we have different implementations as well, separated from each other, like features, UI components, domain logic, and utils. What the build monolith uh, has a, as a special uh, characteristic is that there is one application layer, and this application layer spans horizontally across all domains. That means if there is a change within your code base, maybe you can cache some of those library builds like that feature or that UI library. But at the end, you always need to rebuild the whole application, which is okay -ish. There's no, you do not need to have any worries doing that, but be aware on any change, you need to build the whole flight application here and deploy it to the server. So everything is known during build time, which is also one of the benefits of this architecture. Now let's look into our code base, how this actually is uh, put together. First of all, let's look into the routing configuration of my application shell. 
Here you can find some routes, we will discuss uh, the other ones later, but first of all we will focus at this route actually, this routing object. Um, it defines it that way that if the flight segment occurs in the UL, then normal angular router lazy loading should happen. A dynamic import pointing in this case to a library of this monorepo and loading a constant, in this case an array of URLs. That means how do uh, those uh, URLs look like actually? We have here routing array, this is one of the standalone component APIs already. Uh, so this standalone API allows us to just lazy load an angular array of routes. Uh, so we're using normal angular lazy loading here in the build monolith and we're putting everything together by um, just navigating to the flight segment. We can do so by clicking on the sidebar here. What happens now is that this micro frontend is loaded uh, from a lazy separated bundle. Uh, you can or it, you can already see here there's an Angular version installed for the shell, which is the version 14.2.10. And also, naturally, the micro front end flight has the very same Angular version because it's the build monolith. Everything uses the very same version. Everything is built in one go, but bundles can be split off and loaded at a later point of time, which is the case here. And here we just have a use case where we can search for flights, we can look up some flights, we can root, uh, use the router again to navigate to the edit screen and so on. Fine, so let's get back to the home route and also back to our slides. Uh, the next possible architecture is a micro frontend architecture. Um, like you can see it here on the screen, what is the difference, uh, difference to the previous slide? Basically, maybe the same features like before, but this time, an application for each and every domain or maybe a group of domains in a really loose case. Yeah? That means you can slice the application along your domains and it has the benefit now you can build them separately and deploy them separately to the server. You can manage it in one monorepo, but if you like, you can also manage it in different repositories, uh, which gives you technically the possibility to also use different versions if you like. We will discuss both approaches single version and also um, multi-version approaches. Um, if you manage them, the micro frontends in different repositories, then also uh, be aware that you somehow need to access the shared kernel that can also be managed in one separate repository and then um, published via an NPM package and installed in that repo and in that repo. What are the benefits? Actually, um, we gain the Big benefit, therefore written in bold, um, autonomous teams. And what comes with those autonomous teams and the micro frontend architecture is uh, a separate de development processes, separate deployment processes, so also different points of time when I deploy my application, uh, own architectural decisions. So maybe in one application, you just have a simple tiny one with, with just uh, a few subfolders and in a bigger application, maybe you want to apply um, domain-driven design uh, concepts in your forum and so have a, having a different architecture in place. Um, and maybe you also want to use different technologies. So like having one application written with Angular, another one with React and the third one with Vue maybe. Uh, if you want to integrate those micro frontends into one window object, into one single page application, then uh, we can work with an application shell actually, so one hosting application that is aware of how to load different micro frontends into its own window object. Um, how does this work? Basically, uh, you can see it here on the slide, we have this um, box around our micro frontends, which is actually the shell, and the shell has then some generic logic implemented on how to load those micro frontends, those micro apps. Uh, basically, there are already packages, uh, NPM packages available on the market that can help you exactly with that. So it's not necessary to write everything from scratch. And one of these, uh, yeah, we must really say amazing APIs is uh, Webpack 5 module federation. So it's already, um, Webpack 5 is already used by the Angular CLI since Angular 12. And one of the plugins for uh, Webpack 5 is the module federation plugin that you can use um, 
to get your microphone and story up and running. So basically, this is what we like to achieve. We would like to have dynamic imports in our code base again, because this is a JavaScript feature um, that the bundling tools like Webpack and Angular CLI uh, do not like that much. So basically, uh, it was necessary to implement uh, a concept like model federation to allow our bundling tools to tell them actually there are certain parts that you do not need um, to model in build time, but be aware they will be available during runtime. You can load them later on from a, a URL that I can tell you uh, as, my, as an application shell, I can tell you the URL where to load those micro formats from. So um, the natural behavior, the normal default behavior of, of your bundling tools is that they want to know each and every part of the application at build time and with module federation, we can find a way out of that and allow runtime integration and therefore different build processes that are put together into one window object. Uh, module federation works that way um, that we uh, talk about a host. So what we normally call a shell is called host um, in, in the module federation world. And there's also a remote which we can associate in this case with a micro frontend. Um, basically, we can define some configurations. So the shell can have a configuration uh, where a distinct, um, a specific uh, a remote name points to a URL that can be loaded during runtime, and the microphone and the remote can expose certain implementations, different ones, if you like. And then, if we want to put everything together, the shell uh, has the possibility to place a dynamic import to load the remote and one of the exposed implementations, in this case, my component here. So everything is put together, the configuration in the shell, the configuration of the remote, and therefore the shell can access the source code. Um, that actually comes from a very different build process. Um, how do we get the URL? Uh, actually, you can use discovery services, so even server-based configuration for that. Uh, at the end, it's just a JavaScript file that is created within the build process and loaded via a script tag. That's basically all the magic that you need here. We can also share libraries. That means we can define packages that um, should be shared across hosts and remotes. Um, and therefore, for example, the Angular framework is an important thing to share so that everyone can, can use the very same instance, including all the uh, uh, root level services and so on. This is important, it only works within the same version. Then you can reuse uh, services across different applications with a different multi-version approach. Um, we can do this as well, but the story works a little bit different. We'll talk about this later. How do we deal with version mismatches, actually? Uh, we can select the highest compatible version. Um, this is the default behavior. So if the shell requires, for example, version 10 of a, of a specific library and the micro frontend requires 10.1, uh, then in this case, 10.1 is chosen because this fits for both for shell and the micro frontend and this version, the 10.0, is skipped. Um, actually, if there is no highest compatible version between uh, two uh, remotes or a host and a remote, so like in this case, 11.0 and 10.1, then in this, this case, both are loaded. So be aware of that. Then you have two different versions of a specific library loaded in the window object. It can also be the Angular framework that is then loaded twice or even more often. Um, if we do not want to um, or do not strive for that uh, situation that we load uh, different versions of a certain dependency, then we can set singleton the configuration option single to true. Um, and we even have a uh, possibility uh, to set a, uh, an additional flag afterwards. So first of all, single to true would lead to the situation that if one part of the model federation configuration needs uh, version 11.0 and the other one 10.1, uh, in this case, uh, only 11.0 is loaded. 10.1 is skipped, but nevertheless, I have a conflict here. Yeah, be aware of that because it's no common version. No common version could be found. Nevertheless, only one is loaded because of singleton true. You can even set strict version to true. This would lead to the situation that you do not receive a warning uh, in case uh, you have a conflict here, but uh, it would even raise an error here. 
So in this case, same situation. 11.0 would be loaded 10. Point 1 would be skipped. Uh, it's even allowed to define more relaxing version uh, requirements like that. My library required version beginning with major, major release 1 uh, and uh, including uh, major release uh, lower than 11.1.1. Um, basically, how does this work? How does uh, how can I tell as a developer um, the Angular build process to use a module federation setup? Basically, uh, we normally do not directly work in a Webpack configuration, so that's maybe an open question right now. Angular, how does it work? Angular, the Angular CLI, and module federation uh, somehow playing together. Uh, basically, the Angular CLI is normally the tool we're working to uh, support our developer development process, um, generating new stuff, building an application, and so on. Behind the uh, covers of the of the Angular CLI is, is Webpack 5, so it's used internally, but typically we are not using it um, most of the time, at least not not directly. Um, that means there's somehow uh, a barrier between our implementation and the internal usage of Webpack 5. Uh, so the question is, how can we uh, add uh, our module federation configuration to the Webpack 5 setup that the Angular CLI uses per default? Um, and this can be done with a custom builder. So with a custom builder, I can add an additional Webpack config that is then merged together with the default one. And basically with that, I can tell uh, the Angular CLI on how to build my application, including module federation support. Um, Basically, that you do not need to uh, write everything from scratch, as mentioned. Um, we have some packages prepared, like Angular Architect slash uh, Module Federation. This is the um, was the first package on the market um, supporting um, Module Federation for Angular. It's still actively maintained, of course, and we help you with that to get your story up and running quickly. So let's look into that actually. Um, it offers some features. It creates a skeleton for your Module Federation config. Uh, it installs a custom builder so that you can add that configuration to your build process. And then uh, basically you typically assign a new port to ng-surf so that you have no collisions between different applications. And then that's basically all. You can start the application and use Module Federation, the newly created Module Federation setup together with your application. Um, we can get this up and running by using the ng-add command um, for this package at Angular Architects module federation for the project shell in my case, for example, of course, the other applications need a configuration as well. Then I specify a port, in this case, the default one, and I would like to have the setup with the dynamic host. Um, basically, then I can uh, use the newly, newly, and the newly created and adapted files like the Webpack config and do the uh, concrete setup. Uh, define the concrete setup that I need to have for my application. Um, then it's important to restart the development server. So each and every time you change the Webpack config, keep in mind you need to start and restart the live server. Otherwise, the changes would not be reflected. This is nothing that the live server can figure out um, with with normal reloads. Uh, so now let's look into that setup, module federation and uh, CD version, basically. Um, so. Uh, we have a Webpack configuration here uh, in the in the micro front and passenger, for example. So I have this in the shell uh, and in the micro front and passenger. It's quite lean today, so um, not uh, not that much to configure. My application has the name MFE passenger in this case for micro front and passenger. And here I define to expose a certain implementation. So under the name module, a certain internal imp implementation. Um, shall be exposed like the passenger module. Keep in mind to also uh, add the file extension here and to start with your project root and the relative path. Uh, then down there, I define to share all the dependencies uh, in a singleton setup, so only using one version, um, or striving at least for that. Um, strict version, true, uh, to receive an error, and it should automatically figure out based on your package JSON which version um, is the correct one that the application needs and was built with actually. Um, a similar setup in the, in the shell configuration here. And you also 
already saw this uh, reference, we also have a passenger module here. So a passenger module that has simply some routing configuration added here. Um, that's basically all for the moment. So we have our shell application here. We can add another tab and open also our micro frontend here. So here's how the passenger application looks like in the standalone mode. I can use routing here, but now I would like to add this to the to the shell application. And uh, again, just a, a click on this link away, so I can navigate to passengers. It opens the very same UI, loads it from a different bundle, uh, and basically adds it to the user experience of the application shell. That's quite nice, isn't, isn't it? So it, it runs here in the very same version we can see it here. Uh, 14.2.10 in both cases for the shell, but also for the microphone and passenger. You can look up some passengers here. And even, of course, the routing works. So you can navigate to the editing screen. So sub routing um, in, within your um, microphone that works, including lazy loading. So that's quite nice. So this is the second possible approach. Build monolith with lazy loading was the first. The second now is uh, a single version setup with module federation. And now let's look back to the slides. We can also use a multi version, even multi framework, so React and, and View would work as well, uh, setup. But how does this work? And how does it compare to the single version setup? What's different? Different. You can see Frankenstein here. <laughs> so basically, this is a good comparison. Um, we are putting together things from different build processes, even in different versions. And uh, yeah, somehow build our application like Frankenstein was built. Um, so be aware of that maybe it's not the, the initial architectural choice, the default one that you normally would choose, but you can choose it if you have demand um, to integrate applications that are even written in different Angular versions. So how does this work? Technically, it's something different. In the single version approach, we just added a module via lazy loading coming from a different build process to the very same application infrastructure like the shell, also to the very same dependency injection tree of Angular. So we can use all the very same services of the shell, like the router, uh, global state services, and so on. In this case, it's different. So in this case, we are bootstrapping different applications. So each version setup, each different version setup requires to bootstrap an app. Uh, here, the Angular application, but also uh, a React application could be uh, started and wrapped into a web component. Um, so we are loading basically web components via Module Federation. This is one possible way to go. Um, it can work that way again with a dynamic import. We can use a bootstrap method to start the application actually. Um, but before we do this, we need to add the tag to the DOM uh, and basically then the application can bootstrap and replace the tag with the logic of our application. Um, can also be self bootstrapping. So without a method call by just loading the new bundle. Um, the idea now is that we wrap the whole application into a a custom element into a web component. Um, that way we could find a common generic interface that works independently of the top technology used behind um, the covers of the web component. So it would work for Angular as well as for React and Vue. So we have a common interface and this can be loaded via a wrapper component. So that architecture would be possible. A shell that uses a specific version of Angular and the microphone and one as well then a different Angular version used by microphone and two and three, and finally uh, a React implementation as microphone and four. Uh, be aware of the challenges though. Um, the bundle sizes are bigger because actually we have not only one framework but um, but several. So the lowest possible bundle size is likely in the built monolith. Then uh, in the single version setup there highest bundle sizes in the multi-version setup if it comes to different versions and different Angular frameworks that need to be loaded in parallel. Uh, also be aware of multiple routers. This is also a tough challenge because um, the browser only supports uh, actually one um, one router typically by, by having one address bar and one URL is, that is managed there. So uh, different router instances that are required if you bootstrap different apps um, would lead to uncoordinated changes of the address bar. 
And also you need to bootstrap several Angular instances. In this case, then uh, you also need to be aware of the uh, platform object and the ng zone uh, that they are shared actually in at least some cases. Um, to not, uh, again, um, make it necessary to, to learn everything from scratch and implement everything from scratch. There is, again, another package beside an at Angular Architects Module Federation, this time at Angular Architects Module Federation minus tools, and it can help you with the multi-version, uh, multi-framework setups. Uh, basically, we have five steps uh, to actually get into uh, a running configuration for that. We add, uh, for example, Angular elements to wrap our application with custom elements. Um, then we can uh, basically add or request injector via dependence injection, and then do our custom element wrapping. So first of all, this help method where you can pass in your component reference, typically the root component, and the injector reference, not of the shell in this case, but of the macro front and infrastructure itself. So this bootstrapped application here. And then you can use the return value here uh, to specify it in the browser with custom elements defined and define also a tag name for your newly created Angular element. This time we do this in the ng do bootstrap. That would mean as the script is loaded, basically also uh, your custom element is registered. Then we add the uh, uh, tag to the browser, uh, not to the browser, to the index.html file, of course. And basically, this would lead to a bootstrap of your application then. Then you need a modular federation config. This time, you see an extended version, a little bit more low, le low level in this case, really working with the modular federation plugin. This is also possible, um, where you can um, define even more options also the remote entry name and, and so on. In this case, we are exposing um, the, the whole application bootstrapping uh, implementation. So not only a distinct component or module, but this time actually the whole bootstrapped application. Um, in step three, you can modify the bootstrapping logic so that it helps you to share the Zoom JS instance in the platform, which is quite quite nice to have this, this function um, available because otherwise you, you need to dig deep into the internals and decide which in which cases you need to share uh, the platform, which is quite difficult at the beginning, I would say, so with this function. Um, quite nice and easy. You can differentiate between whether um, you bootstrap the shell or the micro app in this case for the bootstrapping configuration. Um, how does routing now work in a multi uh, framework setup and uh, also multi-version setup. Uh, basically, we can uh, first of all add a routing configuration to the um, to the routing config of your shell. And here you use a, web, a wrapper component. That means if a certain segment uh, is used via the router navigation in your single page application, then uh, it first loads a web component wrapper, which is uh, part of, a, of the library again, but used in the uh, in the application shell. And here in the data block, you can specify the configuration that should be used to load the micro app. So where can the remote entry be found? How is the name of the remote app? Which exposed part do I want to load? And what's the name of the custom element tag? So let's look into this as well. Basically, we return to our routing configuration. Um, this was the previous one uh, to load the single version um, micro frontend by just using the load remote module method. And again, some configuration. This time we added the, uh, we pointed to, to the reference of our module, which the router then instantiated and added, uh, added it to the dependence injection tree. And now in the multi version setup, we are using this configuration like seen on the slides with the wrapper component, with a specific setup, in my case, with the manifest file, the central file in your asset folder that tells your shell where the uh, micro frontends can be found. So you can even change this um, without a rebuild, or you could read the data from the server as well, would also be fine. Um, so with that option, we now can even load a multi-version micro frontend so in this case, look at the version here, 14, 2, 10 in the shell, and here 13, 3, 11 in the micro frontend. So different versions 
of your Angular application, basically, you can look up some bookings in that micro front and you can again use some uh, navigation to navigate to the editing screen. And maybe you have already seen the URL changes up here and somehow we could uh, use a, a technique to compose URLs together, um, different path setups or different segments for the shell and for the booking micro front end. So in this case, we're really working with different router instances. So let's talk about this as well. Basically, some facts, uh, several bootstrapped applications are here in place uh, with different router instances, only one address by the browser. So that's an issue. So default behavior without any um, configuration and setup would be that the address bar is overwritten by the shell, then afterwards uh, by the micro front end. And the, the same procedure repeats and basically this would lead to errors for, for your different router instances. Um, if you use forward and back button, um, it wouldn't work on reloads to actually get exactly back to that view where you navigated before the reload. So quite annoying and quite an issue for multi uh, framework, multi version implementations. So you only have one URL, so, URL, so the default behavior is that the URL gets overridden without coordination. And that sounds like chaos, right? So you would like to avoid chaos likely for business applications or for any application actually. And, and therefore, uh, yeah, we need to find a good concept for that. And a good concept could be that those different URLs, like you can see it here on the slides, uh, microphone and one article search, for example, and microphone and two invoice edit uh, ID number eight, um, that we somehow could compose them into one um, URL format that is capable of managing both URLs. And we can use the concept of Angular's named root outlets. And uh, in this case, it's more than that. So it's not baked in into the Angular root. In this case, we're using only the same idea, the same composition strategy in the address bar, but um, with a different implementation that also supports, in this case, multiple routers. So in this case, you can put something together like this, uh, the parent thesis here and uh, two slashes in between and compose a full URL. You can do this with a package that is currently in beta stage. So at Angular Architects micro app will help you with the routing story and also a little bit of state management baked in via custom elements, uh, custom events. You can use it that way. You can add micro app routing module for shell to your shell application and give it a name like shell in this case, for example, that's the name that is then also present in the URL as a prefix for, for your path. And the same for the micro front end for the micro app by using micro app routing module dot for micro app. And then also specifying a distinct and specific name actually. And that's basically all to get the support for coordinated different router instances. So let's look into that. Basically, I already added this to this example application here for the shell and in my second repository here for the micro app. That's basically all. And then you can um, actually have such a composition like this. I can reload my application. I can go back to the bookings and basically everything works. Everything um, related to the URL management is now picked in and visible in the address bar as well. So the key takeaways are um, Please define your architecture targets. That's the most important thing to uh, actually decide, do you need a build monolith? Do you need a micro front end setup in single version or in multi uh, version uh, configuration? Uh, that's basically most important uh, for you is to really specify what we need to have in place. Is it fine for me to do rebuilds on change, on each change? Is it fine for me? Um, to work with, with different build processes, but in, in a single version setup where I can have different deployment uh, points of time as long as the um, version stays the same. And even the maybe most challenging architecture in, in, the, in the Angular ecosystem or in the single page application the ecosystem right now is the multi version um, setup. But we uh, saw an, an up and running example, so it's definitely manageable also on an enterprise level for your enterprise applications. Uh, so my message uh, to you is please decide whether you need to show 
uh, also one or more micro front end at a, at a very thin point of time. So if it's only one micro front end, you can maybe even choose an easier strategy uh, for routing where certain segments are uh, managed by the shell and data segments of the very same URL are managed by the micro front end. Um, but if you run into that situation supporting even different uh, micro front ends at the very same time loaded into your application shell and also shown on the screen, then in this case, maybe such a concept like like seen uh, before can, can help you in, in those regards. So thanks from my side. You have my all my contact details here. Um, so I'm always happy if you contact me via the social media channels or, or directly via our website, angularchitects.io. You also find all the NPM packages on um, uh, to be uh, to install them actually into your your repositories, module federation, module federation tools, and micro app for the for the routing and state management story. Uh, finally, the example that that I showed you in this talk uh, can be found on GitHub, so uh, the URL here as well. Uh, thanks for having me here at the Code Week. I hope you enjoyed my talk, and maybe we we'll see each other one day. It was nice to meet you. Meet you. Bye. Thank you.